Hi, uh, so uh, welcome to the classes of Vedic Astrology and today we will be learning about Yogacarka and Maraka Grahas or Yogacarka and Maraka Planets for all the Ascendants means for all the Lagnas from Aries to Pisces, all right? So for every Lagna, for every Lagna chart, what are the Yogacarka Grahas? What are the Maraka Grahas? We will be understanding that in detail. All right. And this particular class might be broken down into parts because I think in one particular video, I'll not be able to incorporate all the 12 Lagnas. So I might have to divide this particular class into um, two or three videos. All right. That we will see depends on the time. So now again, I before proceeding further, if you have just uh, joined our class, our Vedic astrology classes, and uh, you are just opening this particular video, I will suggest and it is highly recommended. It is required. It is mandatory. It's not even recommended. It is mandatory that you start watching classes from one. So you watch the first class, you watch the second class. All of these classes have been uploaded in, in this particular YouTube channel itself. And then you come to today's class because a lot of terms and terminologies I will be using a lot of concepts I will be using means I will be saying you will not be able to understand if in case you have not watched the previous classes. All right. So please, first of all, watch the previous classes, l understand them, learn them, practice them. And then you come to today's class. Okay. So let's, I want all of you to draw a Aries Lagna chart. All right. So you can pause this video and you can draw that Lagna chart. So in Aries Lagna, the first house is represented by Aries, the second house by Taurus, the third house by Gemini, the fourth house by Cancer, fifth house by Leo, sixth house by Virgo, seventh house by Libra, eighth house by Scorpio, ninth house by Sagittarius, tenth house by Capricorn, eleventh house by Aquarius, and the 12th house by Pisces and you know which particular planet is ruling which particular Rashi. All right. All of these I have already discussed in the previous classes. Now let's look at Aries Lagna. And again, I just wanted to uh, point something. I had already discussed it, but I'm just restating it. Yoga Karka Grahas, Yoga Karka planets means auspicious, beneficial planet means for that horoscope, whatever Grahas, whatever planets are Yoga Karka, it means all of those planets will give positive results during their Dasha or under Dasha, right? And Maraka planets are inauspicious, inauspicious means the Maraka planets of a particular particular Lagna chart, those planets will be giving, you can say bad effects, not so good effects, inauspicious effects for that particular Lagna chart. All right. So in Aries Lagna, okay, I have to again restate one more important thing, even though I had already discussed about this particular point also in the previous classes. The auspicious houses are the Kendra houses, the first house, fourth house, seventh house and the tenth house and the Trikona houses. That is the first house, fifth house and ninth house. And uh, other good houses are the second house and the eleventh house. Third house is considered to be a bit neutral. But still, it, is, it still gives positive results after a lot of hard work. It shows the results. Third house, sixth house, eighth house and twelfth house. These three houses are considered inauspicious in a particular horoscope chart. 
but again even though if it is if these houses are inauspicious these houses are also karaka of a lot of important things positive things but overall 6th house 8th house and 12th house are not considered good houses in a horoscope all right so now let's get back to the aries lagna chart let's understand what are what are the yoga karaka planets for aries lagna chart and what are the maraka planets for aries lagna chart so first house is aries ruled by mars so lagnesh is always yoga karaka so you can make two columns you can in one column write yoga karaka in another column write maraka for this aries lagna all right so in yoga karaka the first yoga karaka planet for aries lagna is mars itself because mars is lagnesh lord of the first house lord of lagna all right now uh, there is a concept in vedic astrology if the lord of the second house is an enemy of the first house then that particular lord will become a maraka planet for that lagna chart all right if the lord of the second house is the enemy of the lord of the first house then that lord of the second house will become a maraka for that particular lagna chart all right so in this lagna chart and i have already discussed in my previous classes what are the friendly which planets are having a friendly relationship between them which planets are having a enemy or unfriendly relationship between them between them i have discussed about this point in detail so i'll again if you are unaware please look at the previous classes and then you will be able to understand this particular video very in a very clear way so here the second house in aries lagna is taurus so taurus means it is ruled by venus now venus is having an unfriendly relationship with mars so here venus in this horoscope chart will become maraka all right so in the maraka column you can write venus then let's come to the third house the third house is ruled is gemini right and it is ruled by mercury and mercury okay is also ruling the sixth house so here third house is basically a neutral house sixth house is basically an inauspicious house in, in itself so mercury doesn't hold good placements in this particular lagna chart so mercury will also become maraka for this lagna chart all right uh fourth house is ruled by planet moon and fourth house is a kendra house right so fourth house is a very good house it is ruled by cancer planet moon so moon will become a yoga karaka for this particular horoscope lagna chart aries lagna fifth house is ruled by leo that is or fifth house represents sign leo ruled by leo and leo is ruled by planet sun and fifth house is again a very auspicious house and fifth house is a trikona house so here sun will become yoga karaka for this lagna chart let's come to this sixth house i've already discussed the sixth house mercury mercury is a maraka for this particular lagna chart now seventh house there is another concept in vedic astrology similar to the concept of the second house when understanding about yoga karaka and maraka planet for a lagna chart if the lord of the seventh house is an enemy of the lord of the first house means if the lord of the seventh house is an enemy of the lagnesh then the lord of the seventh house the planet representing that seventh house will also become maraka for that lagna chart all right so here the seventh house is ruled by uh, libra and the planet ru ruling libra is venus now venus being the lord of the seventh house is in a, is an enemy sign or is an enemy of the lord of the first house that is a lagnesh of this lagna chart that is mars so venus will become a maraka now you can see the second house and the seventh house both are ruled by the same sign venus so venus becomes a maraka even if suppose 
the seventh house is is ruled by a different planet and that planet is an enemy of the lord of the first house of the lagnesh then that planet becomes a maraka for that lagana chart all right let's come to the eighth house now eighth house is ruled by planet mars but here now you should question yourself or you should give uh, write me a question right that you said that mars is yoga karka for this lagna chart but mars is also the lord of the eighth house and you also said that uh, eighth house is inauspicious for a particular horoscope in any horoscope but you should always understand so here me i am saying it that you should always understand even if the lagnesh is the lord of either of the sixth house eighth house and twelfth house lagnesh is always yoga karaka for that horoscope chart even if the you again even if lagnesh means the lord of the first house is also the lord of the sixth house or eighth house or twelfth house lagnesh will always be yoga karaka so the inauspicious effects of the sixth house eighth house and twelfth house doesn't affect a uh, lagnesh lagnesh is the most auspicious you can say planet for a particular horoscope chart for a particular lagna chart lagnesh is very very important now ninth house is ruled by planet jupiter all right now you have to understand here jupiter is ruling the ninth house as well as the twelfth house all right but again one more concept even if similar to the concept of lagnesh which i just talked about if a planet is the lord of a trikona house but that planet is also the lord of either the 6th house 8th house or 12th house that planet will always be yoga karaka even if a pl particular planet i'm just uh, arranging my words in a different way all right even if a planet is the lord of the 6th house 8th house or the 12th house but if the same planet is also the lord of any of the trikona houses that is 1519 that planet will always be a yoga karaka for a particular lagna chart so in this aspect jupiter will be a yoga karaka graha yoga karaka planet for aries lagna chart now let's look at the 10th house now the 10th house and the 11th house both are ruled by saturn right 10th house is a kendra house very auspicious 11th house is considered to be mostly auspicious uh, so here saturn will be considered as a yoga karaka but there is a concept in vedic astrology also here saturn is considered as a samgraha samgraha means i'll come to it later so you can write in the you can write saturn in that yoga karaka column itself but just write s u m sum sum is a hindi word so just write sum in on the just on in a bracket beside uh, saturn all right but saturn is not a maraka it's a yoga karaka graha all right in this particular lagna chart because saturn is having good placements for this particular horoscope it is having a lordship of the 10th house as well as the 11th house and both are now 11th house earlier it might not had been considered in the ancient times not so great but today's world 11th house is very very important because it's all about your fulfillment of desires all right so 11th house is considered to be again auspicious today's world and so i have covered mostly all of the houses so when i am talking about okay yoga karaka graha maraka graha now i want to just you have to understand about very important points and this whatever i'm saying right now will be applicable for all the lagna charts so even if a particular planet is yoga karaka for a particular lagna chart whatever yoga karaka grahas you have written in that lagna chart in right now whatever you have written the ultimate yoga karaka status will be depending on the placement of the planet itself now let's come to an example now here in this particular lagna chart i have said that suppose uh, suppose i'm giving you an example moon all right i have said moon is a yoga karaka for this particular horoscope chart all right in this lagna chart but if moon being the lord of the fourth house 
if moon is sitting in the 8th house itself or the 12th house or the 6th house right so the placement of moon is moon is bad it is sitting in either of the 6th house or the 8th house or the 12th house then moon will be a maraka for this particular horoscope chart it means you will not be able to wear the gemstone of moon all right so any situation you should always wear the gemstone of a yoga karka planet and yoga karka i just said the ultimate status of the yoga karka is whatever i had mentioned depending on the lagna chart the lordship of the houses and the placement of the how of that planet itself now also let's come to sun now sun is a yoga karka graha whatever i had mentioned being the lord of the fifth house but if the same sun is sitting in either of the sixth house or the eighth house or the twelfth house sun also becomes a maraka because the placement of the sun is not great is not good all right so now you understand saturn now you have to understand this particular thing okay for some grahas uh just now you consider some some graha as a yoga karka graha i do not want to complicate it but okay just saying it so that you are having a more specific knowledge now some graha means if that planet now suppose saturn is the some graha now if the saturn is sitting in a house where that lord of that particular house is is having a friend relationship with that lagnesh then saturn will give favorable results all right so here let me give you an example now if saturn is placed in the fourth house all right even if it is placed in the sign of in the sign of moon but saturn and moon are not okay so here you have to understand some very important points so saturn i said is some graha now if saturn is placed in a particular horoscope where the lord of that in a place in a particular house where that lord of that particular house is in a friendly sign or is in a, in a favorable state with that lagnesh of that particular lagna chart then the sam graha will be positive will be completely yoga karka so here saturn suppose if it is placed in the fourth house now fourth house is ruled by planet moon in adis lagna but even if moon and saturn they are in enemy in with each other but for sam graha this is not the factor con- to con- to consider we have to consider moon saturn is placed in the fourth house so the planet ruling ruling the fourth house is moon cancer now moon is in favorable uh, in is in incompatible relationship with aries with mars in this particular lagna chart so saturn is sitting in a house where the lord of that particular house is having a friendly relationship with the lagna lord of that particular chart so saturn here will give good results so saturn if it is placed in the fifth house will also give good results because sun is having a friendly relationship with mars that is the lagna lagnesh of this particular lagna chart now the same saturn is placed in the third house suppose and the third house that is mercury is having a disturbing relationship with mars in this particular lagna chart so saturn here will not give favorable results if saturn is placed in the second house now second house is ruled by taurus planet venus now venus is also a maraka for this particular lagna chart so saturn will not give favorable results so this is the concept of some grahas the relationship the working of the some grahas all right so you have to be very careful to understand how a some graha will perform during its mahadasha and antardasha because the placement of the some graha is very important now if a yoga karka graha for this particular planet if it is placed in good houses second house fourth house fifth house seventh house ninth house tenth house eleventh house right yoga karka grahas will be always giving good results despite of the fact whether the lord of that particular house is an enemy of that particular planet let's again learn with an example mm, all right so if moon let's come with moon also moon is a yoga karka planet for this particular 
horoscope lagna chart now if moon is placed in the 10th house moon will still be yoga karka and will give positive effects even though the lord of the 10th house saturn is an enemy of moon but that will not matter moon will always give good results for this particular lagna chart irrespective of the fact whether that moon is is in friendly sign with the lordship of that particular house or not all right a yoga karka graha when well placed house wise will always give good results a yoga karka graha will only give bad results when it is placed in 6th 8th or 12th house and there are no raj yogas forming for that yoga karka graha or it is placed in the 6th 8th or 12th house and it is not getting us combusted by the sun so only in these two situations where a raj yoga is forming or it is combusted by sun then only a yoga karka graha will give positive effects for 6th 8th 12th house even for a maraka graha is also placed in the 6th 8th 12th house and if it is forming a raj yoga the maraka graha will always give positive effects now lagnesh is very important if a lagnesh is sitting in the 6th 8th or the 12th house all right so the lagnesh will not give good results i just said that lagnesh is always beneficial always auspicious but asterix the lagnesh will not should not be sitting in the 6th 8th and 12th house all right even if the lagnesh is forming viprit raj yoga lagnesh for lagnesh viprit raj yoga doesn't work because lagnesh itself the lord of the first house itself is sitting in the 6th 8th and 12th house so even other planets if other planets are having viprit raj yoga but in that particular lagna chart lagnesh is also sitting in the 6th or 8th or 12th house viprit raj yoga doesn't happen you have to strengthen the status of lagnesh all right so it is very essential for a lagnesh to sit in any houses but not the 6th 8th and 12th house all right because then the entire lagna chart becomes very weak if a lagnesh becomes very weak because of its placement the the but the most important sign or you can see the most in, the the most common indications found is that person faces a lot of physical problems ailments physical ailments that particular person faces health wise all right the health of the person doesn't actually uh, stay good they are they find it very difficult to maintain their good health they go through a lot of struggles because the lagnesh is sitting in the 6th 8th and 12th house so in this particular situations it's very important to strengthen lagnesh and i will be covering about all of these points in detail in the time to come i'm just touching it so that you have a more clear cut understanding about what are the yoga karka grahas what are the maraka grahas in a particular lagna chart all right and let me see if i need to say something more okay also a maraka graha so if a so i have i just said in this particular aries lagna chart venus and mercury are maraka so even if venus or mercury is situated in in good houses they will not give good results so a maraka graha by default that is i whatever i had said for a particular lagna chart will always be universal that maraka graha will not give good results in any situation whatsoever even if it is placed in trikona houses or even if it is placed placed in kendra houses they will actually restrict the auspicious effects of the play of the, of the good houses they are placed the maraka grahas only and on only situations maraka grahas will give good results when they form any raj yogas all right or they are exalted when a planet gets exalted even if a maraka planet gets exalted that planet gives great results all right so this things few things you have to keep in your mind so now again one more particular point is the ist devata ist a ist devata is a very very important concept when you were your understanding about a lagna chart the lord of the fifth house the god ruling the lord of the fifth house is considered ist dev or ist the devata it is very very auspicious for every person to worship their ist devata they will always get great results all right despite of the fact where the maraka planets is placed in the fifth house or the lord of the fifth house is maraka for that particular horoscope that doesn't matter 
the ist devata is always auspicious if you worship the ist devata a lot of problems related to horoscope resolves especially the fifth house and fifth house is mostly and mostly about your intelligence all right so fifth house in this aspect lot of the fifth house is sun so surya dev surya devta so a particular person who has a aries lagna needs to worship surya devata and i will tell you basically the most auspicious way of worshiping the ist devata is chanting the beej mantra of that particular devata or of that particular planet sun so you can also uh, you can offer water so there are a lot of ways by which you can worship surya devta and for aries lagna surya devta is the ist devata because fifth house is ruled by leo the planet ruling leo is sun and the god that indicates sun is e uh, surya dev all right so this is the way in which one person or a person who is well acquainted with the concepts of vedic astrology understands what are the yoga karka grahas what are the maraka grahas means a yoga karka planets what are the maraka planets for a particular lagna chart this is the process in the upcoming videos i will talk about the yoga karka grahas maraka grahas and the ist dev for all the lagna chart i will not be repeating the process that is by the help of which you will be able to know which graha is yoga karka which particular graha is maraka because the same process applies for all the lagna charts so it is very essential for you to practice today's video because once you are well familiar with the process you yourself will be now able to understand for every particular lagna chart what are the yoga karka grahas what are the maraka grahas because the process you are well familiar with all right so in the upcoming videos i will discuss about all of these things about all the lagna charts yoga karka graha maraka grahas and the ist devtas and um, that was it for this particular video please subscribe to this youtube channel subscribe it as a request and please like this video share this video so that this particular video all of my videos spreads and more and more people are aware about the concepts about the science of vedic astrology more and more people they learn this beautiful knowledge of vedic astrology all right i'll see you in the next episode in the next class thank you